President Biden is expected to sign a new executive order he hopes will reduce gun violence in the U.S. The president will outline this measure while visiting Monterey Park, California today. A mass shooting shocked that Los Angeles suburb less than two months ago. A gunman killed 11 people and wounded nine others following a Lunar New Year celebration. Joining us now is CBS News senior White House and political correspondent Ed O'Keefe. Uh, Ed, thanks very much for being with us. So, among other things, this latest executive order seeks to make it more difficult for people to get their hands on guns. What about legally? Will this stand up to potential legal challenges? It's a good question, Elaine. We're, we're not entirely certain because, in part because so far what we understand to be in this executive order is a little vague. But basically what it's doing is reinforcing what Congress passed last year. Remember that bipartisan legislation they passed in the wake of the Uvalde shooting and the shooting in Buffalo. Uh, in essence, making sure that background checks are conducted on the kinds of sort of private or smaller level gun sales uh, that maybe an antique dealer does to a buyer or that happens on the sidelines of a gun show. Um, by, by making sure that those background checks happen, it at least adds one more layer of protection. You could conceivably see some kind of a small uh, small time gun dealer, somebody who does this casually or again maybe is just an antique dealer trying to introduce a lawsuit that suggests that this infringes on their Second Amendment rights. but. Remember that the legislation passed with bipartisan support in part because Democrats and Republicans believed it didn't do that and would withstand legal challenge. Well, speaking of the, the schism between Democrats and Republicans, Republicans obviously controlling the House. Is there any chance, Ed, that any more legislative action might be taken to reduce gun violence beyond that bipartisan measure that you're talking about? It was so difficult to string together the, the equation or the or the you know the formula that brought together especially in the senate the republicans and democrats needed to do it that it would be difficult to see what more could potentially be done absent some unforeseen disaster or tragedy that compels congress to act yet again um, and remember advocates said this is impressive and it's good to see the most substantive legislation in decades past but it doesn't go nearly as far as gun uh, control advocates would like and so uh, we'll have to wait and see. Where, where there does seem to be sort of a bipartisan agreement that more needs to be done is in the realm of police reform or criminal justice reform more broadly. Uh, that doesn't necessarily have to do with gun violence specifically, uh, unless for whatever reason the policing community suggests to Congress that there needs to be more done to protect cops uh, who face these, these deadly weapons on the streets every day. Uh, you know, Ed, it was just last month that I was in Michigan, in Lansing specifically, when Michigan State University students marched there in protest after a mass shooting at their school. Um, yep. And they were demanding action from state officials, from federal officials. Can you talk a bit more about the political forces at work here? When we see this action taken by President Biden, what else uh, is at play here? Because you know, I also covered Sandy Hook, and this was an issue, as you know, that um, President Obama worked on. Um, there was no agreement at that time either. Um, yeah. These arguments have continued to circulate. These shootings have continued to take place. Can you talk about this particular moment and why the president may be acting on this right now? Well, it's something he asked for. And so coming here to Monterey Park, uh, just outside Los Angeles, uh, allows him to meet with the victims' families, which is what he's doing today, and survivors of the shooting to reinforce his support and sort of do what he does as a commander-in-chief and try to comfort communities that have been affected by these kinds of tragedies. But then by signing this executive order saying, here, I'm trying to do something about it. Now, he's doing this in a state that has some of the strictest gun control or gun laws generally in the nation, and yet gun violence still happens here. Um, and, and he's doing it at a time when, as you said, there are people across the country clamoring for more. So if anything, today is, is primarily designed to say, here's all I can do as an executive, absent congressional action. If you'd like more, you know what you have to do. You have to pressure Congress to take action. We can expect that he will once again call for passage of a renewed federal ban on assault-style weapons, something that was championed by this state senior Senator Dianne Feinstein back in the day and Biden when they were both in the Senate together. Uh, but beyond that, uh, there's very little more that he can really do at this point other than try to continue to encourage Americans who are concerned about it to speak out and vote the way that they feel on this issue. All right. Matt O'Keefe, thank you.